From super silly sidekicks to strong supporting roles, the animal comic relief was being relieved of duty and enlisted into service of their human lead co-stars for action cartoons and toys of the 1980s. I'm Victor and straight out of the gen experience when our animal friends went from anthropomorphic punchlines to delivering the punches. As we transitioned into a new decade, Strawberry Shortcake and friends were comforted with typical yet scrumptious smelling pets. The masters of the universe employed fantastical beasts as mounts while going into battle. And G.I. Joe turned the animal world upside down by elevating their four-legged or winged friends into serious roles, while depicting their relationship with their human counterpart in a way never seen before. Click the like and consider subscribing to the channel. Now let's check out man's best friend. And when it came to G.I. Joe, those friends weren't always canine. I probably shouldn't use their real names, but I'm sure none of you are Cover the Enemy. Stanley Perlmutter from New Jersey was the dog trainer for the G.I. Joes. By far the best trained was Junkyard. With even temperament, the other Joes often preferred Junkyard to their buddy Mutt, whose personality portrayed more than the part of a Junkyard dog. Mutt went into battle against Cobra with his faithful Rottweiler, Junkyard, by his side. A coat of black fur accented by a brown underside made him stand out with the rest of the Joes, especially in the cartoons that started 1983, where he got some great screen time. The first real American hero Joe character to be released with a corresponding animal makes this 1984 figure iconic, as does the incredible artwork featured on the blister card, where Junkyard's ferocity takes center stage. The current line of G.I. Joe Classified does an incredible job to update the original figure with modern technology and allows Junkyard some incredible posability that brings these two to the next level. They may have been first, but would not be the last human-animal pairing from this favorite franchise of the 1980s. Mutt and Junkyard might be a hard act to follow, but let's try. The G.I. Joes went all out with their new recruit, Spirit. This Native American was their tracker and came along with his eye in the sky, Freedom. Charlie Iron Knife is Spirit's real name. Coming from a reservation in Taos, New Mexico, his figure's release in 1984 had all the typical trappings of his heritage to help us young people recognize the soldier as an American Indian. His natural skills made him a perfect addition to the special forces of G.I. Joe. Being a bald eagle, and probably on the endangered species list at the time, Freedom doesn't get a lot of the spotlight in the cartoon, but is shown accompanying spirit regularly, and as for that squawk, none other than the world-class maker of animal noises and Megatron himself, Frank Welker. His newest incarnation in the G.I. Joe classified line updates this character, but does not sideline his culture. As for Freedom, the update to the always spread eagle, eagle, has two sets of wings. One for perching and one for soaring or dive bombing. Take your choice. I tell you, Polly, do I know how to avoid work or do I know how to avoid work? Ah. Ah, shirking duty. Ah. Classic shipwreck. There were plenty of dog sidekicks in the 70s, but as a little more action adventure took over, realism was the order of the day. <laughs> Uh, except that one time. Nevertheless, a diverse array of Wild Kingdom co-stars materialized in G.I. Joe. Like Freedom, this is the second avian animal. Hector Delgado is from Chula Vista, California, and this sailor is a fan favorite, including one of mine. It might seem like a trope or typical for a sailor to be accompanied by Polly, a bright green parrot, but he's no pirate. I bet my bottom dollar that they're hiding in pirates' cove. It's been a smuggler's hideout for centuries. How do you know so much about hideouts? Shipwrecks are crook! A crook! Their salty interactions, particularly in the cartoon, made for lighthearted moments that demonstrated the foibles of shipwreck and often put his modesty in check. This doesn't mean that Polly didn't have some pivotal moments in the cartoon series as well. The voice of Shipwreck, some amalgamation of Jack Nicholson characters, was provided by either Wally Burr or the ever-present Frank Welker, and will go down in history, as will the recognizability of the action figure. Appearing in 1984 in the cartoon, his plastic doppelganger wasn't released until 1985, along with his Marvel Comics debut. 
Well made, he stands out in this eclectic band of military special forces in the instantly familiar sailor attire and tattoos, as well as a very small green and very easily lost poly parrot accessory for his arm. Career sailor, Shipwreck loves every moment of it. The original figure is so well known, they didn't stray far while reproducing this incredible modern version of the character, except for a sizable dose of chest hair along with a new Polly, getting some due respect with more detail to either perch on Hector's shoulder or his arm. Beat it, you crazy coyote! Meep, meep. Let's reconnoiter, Snake Eyes. Try not to snake Eyes. Who doesn't know this guy, right? Well, everything but his name. That's still classified. Snake Eyes has had his own live action movie and an incredible backstory developed over time from the very beginning continuing through today. Ninjas were hot. I mean, you couldn't avoid a movie, TV show, or toy line for that matter that did not have some Eastern inspired self defense expert character. You couldn't tie your white belt before a ninja practiced some bojutsu on your ass. Whether authentic or not at the time, ninja was a buzzword for anything remotely Asian mixed with martial arts. As the Joes did not have ninja in their list of military specialties, they assigned him commando when he was first released. But the writing was on the wall, or the file card to be more accurate. Simply stating he was proficient in 12 different unarmed fighting systems was enough to plant the seed with the fans, and by the action figures version 2, the file card had been updated to make it official. Left the service to study mystic martial arts with the same ninja family that produced Storm Shadow. So yeah, Ninja. You are Ninja. And Snake Eyes, he was hot right out of the gate. But this is all about his animal partner. And it was the second version of the Snake Eyes action figure that not only included Timber the Wolf, but introduced him on that same file card bio. Snake Eyes was living an ascetic existence in the High Sierras with a pet wolf named Timber when he was recruited for the G.I. Joe team. Timber was never far away. Varied but similar accounts aligned Timber with Snake Eyes, and as his constant companion, he would accompany his silent master on various adventures in the comics and cartoon. The 1985 toy release was the second figure that year to have an accompanying animal partner, the other being Shipwreck. The box art was completely different from the original, and similarly to the 1984 Mutton Junkyard, a vicious depiction of the Grey Wolf on the Incredible Blister card gave us everything we needed to know about him. Little has changed with his most recent plastic plaything. The classified Snake Eyes with Timber is exactly how we imagined it to be, and the wolf gets the articulation he deserves. Law. The Joe's MP came late in the game, and sadly, at the very end of my original childhood toy time. Christopher Levine of Texas was paired with Order, his German shepherd when recruited by the G.I. Joes. Having another piece of exceptional card art to tell us kids who he was and all the story we needed to spark our imagination, Law and Order could take your storytelling to the next level. Whoa, do not pet. Seriously, he's working. Those Joe dogs look dangerous, but they did their job and Order was no exception. Originally only appearing in the G.I. Joe movie in 1987, Law and Order's K-9 MP was enhanced to include bomb disposal. The figure was also released in 1987 and would have a small number of repaints and re-releases through the years. I had already bought my last toy by the time Law and Order debuted. My last toy as a kid, that is. Life was changing, I was getting older, as one does, and by 1987, all I could do was pay attention to the toy aisles as my days of getting action figures were over. Well, at least for the next 15 years. The heroes, the toys, they would all fade into the background while life moved on, as is the natural order. The initial run of G.I. Joe A Real American Hero would end its run in 1994, and by that time, I would not have even recognized the line. I certainly would be unfamiliar with newer characters and their animal world counterparts that came later. But that's not important right now. What is important is to share that the original 1960s and 70s G.I. Joe action figure did include some incredible animals within their action and adventure packs. They were included in themed sets. Light on detail and no real background, they acted as just another accessory to any story you could come up with. And accessories with no articulation. Clearly not intended to be counterparts or active co-stars in the action like the animals of a real American hero G.I. Joe, your original Joe action figure could still interact with a diverse array of wildlife. These original packs included some dogs in the Fight for Survival set. 
a white tiger for big game hunter, the eight ropes of danger's octopus, as well as a shark and a crocodile in other sets. But my favorite, hands down, is the capture of the pygmy gorilla. I need that. As you can see, Action Man's best friend did not exist in the original run of G.I. Joe. It was the 80s version of the concept that allowed for more pairings with various characters and elevated various animals to stardom in their own right, without giving them anthropomorphic qualities that had been so prevalent in the decade prior. But that's not the end. Why only cover the Joe's team of creature co-stars when there are a small group of early Cobra villains to operate with partners from the Animal Kingdom? Many find Serpentor a poor excuse for a follow-up to Cobra Commander. He sometimes gets the shaft like Rodimus Prime as a replacement of Optimus. But I just thought his origin story was the bomb. A clone using DNA from the great leaders of history created by the Cobra orthodontist turned mad scientist, Dr. Mindbender. With Serpentor, we lost the slightly Third Reich type of look sported by Cobra Commander, although it would live on with Miles Mayhem from Mask. But what Serpentor had other than a Vegas-style costume that Cobra Commander did not was a pet snake. A King Cobra named, uh, nothing. Just a pet cobra. If it did have a name in the comics, please let me know. Looking back, I think it could have been a more prominent role. You know, kind of like the one in Harry Potter. The little plastic snake molded in motion accompanying the original toy was a bit lackluster. It certainly was appropriate along with the new Cobra Emperor aboard his floating throne. I, I mean, chariot. The artwork lends the character his weight and menace, but overall he was a blowhard without the theatrics of Cobra Commander. Compared to the modern version of Gold Daddy and his big old snake, many feel this next Cobra baddie is tops. Sadly, by the time of Croc Master's original toy release, the Sunbow Marvel cartoon had been cancelled. His character, a young man raised on an alligator farm in the Florida Everglades, who kills his abusive father by knocking him into the gator pen to be eaten alive, might have been a little violent for cartoons, even if they were 80s cartoons. But that is what the pages of the comic books are for. Cobra hires him for security and he takes the mantle of Croc Master, which is odd since he's from Florida, which has mainly alligators. But best not to think about that too deeply. The action figure is released in 1987 and he is only seen animated in the current G.I. Joe commercials, ever so briefly. But along with one of his favorite pets, the figure did come with a static, small alligator. Just like Serpenter's pet, it had no name. The comic kills off Croc Master dramatically, but not before we discover his tendency to name his scaly girls anything from Lolita to Tiffany. He has more than one ferocious partner, but for the classified issue of the deluxe action figure Croc Master, the muscular villain includes Fiona, one of his precious reptiles in full articulated glory that he can handle or sick on a member of the Joe team. Rumor has it one of the Croc Master action figures over the years sports subtle bite marks on his arm. I can't confirm if this is true or which, so please let me know. In the same 1987 toy commercial, you'll get a blink and miss it appearance by Cobra's falconer, Raptor. Who knew they needed one? Turning his back on his own accountant career, there are few employment opportunities in the falconry world, so you take work where you can get it even with the terrorist organization, Cobra. Again, unless he calls it simply Falcon, there is no given name to this bird of prey, but he leverages it to attack and retrieve. Raptor takes his job seriously, maybe too seriously, taking on the mantle more like a cosplayer with literal flair. Raptor wears feathered pants with taloned boots, a bird-like headdress and eye makeup, and a large feather-like cape, shirtless of course. The action figure and his artwork both convey a rather big boxy guy with more ab muscles than is humanly possible, and it includes either a brown or gray bird with static outstretched wings. Raptor 2 meets an untimely doom in the comics. As for the whereabouts of the Falcon, I assume he's circling about, waiting for any new action figure of this character to be released with some acceptable deco and much needed posability all bird baddies need. Even with a 2017 version of the avian villain, Falcon was still portrayed in a static plastic at the end of a staff. No respect. Now don't get all bent out of shape. Of course there were still some great comedy sidekicks to favorite franchises of the era. Who can forget Snarf from the Thundercats? And who wants to forget T-Bob from Mask? But the original run of what is considered a sequel to the 60s, 70s G.I. Joe action figure concept, A Real American Hero, ran from 1982 to 1994. Although I was out long before that, I have become aware of more characters introduced with real-life animal partners. The Joes had Spearhead and Max the Bobcat, 
and Nogahide the Dreadnought and his wild boar in 1988 for the bad guys. What's with Cobra not naming their animals? Those are bad fur parents. Not the fantasy creatures you ride into battle, and certainly not the talking, goofy sidekick kind. The Joes treated their animal companions as members of the team, genuine character co-stars taking their place alongside their human leads. I certainly have a soft spot for junkyard and timber, but I do love a German Shepherd, so perhaps I can find some love for Law & Order. What about you? Did you have a favorite G.I. Joe human-animal team-up? Who is the most memorable? Tell us all in the comments along with your G.I. Joe memories. By now, I hope you've clicked that like and maybe even subscribed. There's no purchase necessary. Now, please look around for some other great content from the generation that created everything that is still great. The same generation that brought us 30 minutes or less pizza delivery, the Gen Experience. Thank you for watching and stop by the store as well. And now you know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe!